In many developing countries, a wide range of conventional and innovative water sanitation and hygiene technologies are available to the sector, as well as different approaches for their introduction. Some of these technologies work well and go to scale, while others fail to deliver the services they were intended to provide. Technologies can be piloted for extended periods, but the same mistakes can be made in their development and lessons are not learned from failure. There are rarely standards for uptake and approval of technologies. To address this, WashTech, an action research project, is being implemented in Uganda by WaterAid, Network for Water and Sanitation, NetWAS, and the Appropriate Technology Center, the ATC. The project aims to produce a systematic and robust technology assessment framework, commonly called the TAF, for water and sanitation technologies and the approaches used to introduce them. It should help decision makers to make informed decision while introducing a particular wash Technology. This technology assessment framework helps all people involved in technology introduction and use to decide if a water and sanitation technology is likely to be sustainable and applicable in a specific context. In Kanungu district of southwestern Uganda, the technology assessment framework was used to assess solar powered water pumping for domestic supply by representatives from the Ministry of Water and Environment district local governments, local NGOs, research institutions. Participants are introduced and trained on using the technology assessment framework, focusing on key steps of screening. When we are screening, we look at the need, whether there is a demand for a particular technology, and then whether it is applicable within that context. The results from screening and assessment processes are presented and interpreted. Prior to conducting a detailed assessment of solar pump technology, a more detailed assessment based on affordability, management, performance, and viability of the supply chain is carried out. In the assessment, participants examine the solar technology using six sustainability dimensions to capture views of technology users, service regulators, scheme operators, and government representatives. <laughs> He has no problem with the water pump. It has been working well. Our pump is functioning well because it is protected as recommended. Large efficiency because uh, initially it was something seen as a domain maybe of projects, but uh, districts today the districts are beginning to plan where we cannot get, not get ground flow schemes. The alternative is either to go in for pumping using the national grid or diesel or fuel, but that has proved to be very expensive and very unreliable. I say promising is because it's working. After the initial cost, then the solar becomes more efficient. There is potential in the country for solar energy. We have the sunshine most of the time in the, in the whole calendar year. Operation and maintenance is done by scheme operators and the maintenance fee is embedded in the cost of water paid by the users. Participants visited Katete and Ishasha solar water schemes to get practical experiences on how the technology works. We're at a solar scheme uh, which supplies the town of Katete and we've been looking at the uh, solar panels, the uh, pump house uh, and the spring source where water is supplied to the pump house and conveyed to the town. There are some solar panels which uh, have cracked, which are no longer working and therefore when they are not working they affect a module which is just something like this one. Whereby, if one solar panel which is not connect, which is not working, affects the flow of current in a module, and therefore it means that there are so many uh, panels which are working but they are ineffective. After each field visit, focus group discussions were held with the users, scheme operators, water board members, district water officers, and solar pump suppliers to devise means for improved service delivery. The information from the focus group discussions held in the field is presented. Through this presentation, 
Scores for each of the sustainability dimensions and for the different key stakeholders are interpreted. Risky areas are defined and mitigation measures discussed. Participants interpreted the results to reach an agreed conclusion about the applicability of solar water pumps technology in this context. The involvement of all key stakeholders generated a high-level understanding and acceptance of the results of the technology assessment in the wider sector. Although conclusions based on the technology assessment framework exercise do not necessarily lead to a selection of a particular technology, the process helps decision makers at different levels make informed decisions. A solar powered pumping for domestic supply has great potential in Uganda, but only if the following conditions are in place. There is need for promotion and collective marketing involving government, CSOs and manufacturers of the technology. For example, the Ministry of Water and Environment should put in place structures at different levels to promote solar power water pumping technology. There is need to advocate for the willingness of financial institutions to provide loans to scheme operators to replace expensive components in the event of their loss or damage. After sales technical support should be made available to scheme operators by suppliers of solar pumps or technically qualified umbrella organizations. These systems, uh, support them by uh, putting their systems to normal, uh, checking the solar alarms, whether they are functional, because we, the, the, there is a big threat with sieves, people who temper to steer. This is a very useful exercise. It gives us an opportunity as the ministry to always try to assess ourselves with the approaches, technologies that we try to adopt, we assess, try to find out the weaknesses of that technology and also from the discussions we can easily find the, 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 a way forward on how to, to push it further. It has given me more knowledge about solar, it has given me insight of what happens, how they install solar and uh, how communities appreciate it and the views, my own appreciation of solar has improved and I'll be in a better position to guide the districts about solar. This exercise has changed my perspective uh, towards the, the solar uh, system which is uh, used in uh, pumping water. I believe that uh, I've got the view of, uh, of our water users uh, in respect to the technology of solar and I think we can be able to uh, educate them, we can be able to sensitize them such that we can be, we can be able to embrace uh, this technology uh, fully. The exercise was useful. People were able to get an appreciation for the tap. There's some like the water board who considered that they had adequate information, they were able to admit that through using the TAF they did not have this information, but also were able to identify where the gaps are. We got a lot of feedback about the TAF itself, and so we expect that uh, out of that feedback we'll be able to get a better tool. Well, we need to continue to document what we have learned. We need to assess the, the feedback from the, from the users who have been participating in the workshop and in the field. But then also we'll have to come up with a report for the ministry that will inform them about the appropriateness of the solar pump. This is something which they have requested for. So our hope is that we'll be able to come up with an informative document that will help them in decision making.